We understand that astronomical reasons determine the nature of climatic changes on the planet right now and at this time. Many people believe that climate change is gradual. However, this is not always the case. In science, we know the direction of catastrophism, a hypothesis about periodic strong planetary catastrophes leading to mass extinctions and changing the face of the Earth. The geological history of our planet shows that the Earth has already experienced such phases of global climate change more than once. Geologists think in terms of millions of years and usually consider huge periods. From a geological point of view, 12,000 years is a very short period of time. However, studies at the last 120,000 years show that catastrophic changes to the planet have indeed occurred in the most recent history. Geologic deposits indicate that events occur during the cycle that science currently considers unrelated between one another. For example, the movement of the magnetic poles cannot provoke volcanic eruptions or glaciations. However, you will clearly see that this is what has been happening and is happening right now, because we are now entering a 12,000-year cycle. Evidence of this will be proved today throughout the conference and for the first time will be given in 100 languages of the world. Today you will learn the interconnections of the cataclysmic cyclic processes, the proof facts of the changes and how it can end if we continue to do nothing. I suggest you watching this video about the cyclicity of 12,000 years. We hear reassuring speeches that if we do away with fossil fuels, the temperature increase can be kept within 1.5 degrees for the next 100 years. Unfortunately, we don't have that time. The truth is that humanity doesn't even have 10 years to spare. And right now, we can't influence the true causes of climate change. After all, the reason for that lie in 12,000 year cycle of catastrophes caused by galactic interactions. Do you have an idea how serious this is? The cycle of terrible cataclysms which the Earth now has to go through occurs on the planet every 12,000 years and it has been described by various researchers in many scientific works and books. Earth's core creates a magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic poles are movable. Their sudden shift is called geomagnetic excursion. And note in which time intervals such excursions took place over the last 120,000 years. The interval between them is approximately 12 to 13,000 years. It is shocking that at the same time, there were sharp rises in world sea level, glaciation, and the strongest volcanic eruptions. Each time during such excursions, the magnetic field of the Earth became 8 to 10 times weaker, and this led to an increase in the flux of cosmic radiation. Modern science cannot explain why geomagnetic excursions coincide with dramatic climate change and glaciations. At the end of 20th century, Hartmut Heinrich did a great study he collected data on the bottom sediment of seas, lakes, and rivers. And using them, he reconstructed all the dramatic temperature changes over the past 100,000 years. These changes were called Heinrich events. 
Each such cycle corresponds to a short period of glaciation, preceded by a sharp warming of the planet by 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. Dating the Heinrich events, Sydney Hemming in 2004 published her version of the periodicity of the abrupt temperature changes where the events of the 12,000-year cycle clearly stand out. Geologists have also studied organic material from sediments over the past 75,000 years, which indicate the periodicity of the melting of massive glaciers. Douglas Vogt, geologist, has analyzed the carbon-14 dating of sediments and listed the works supporting this glaciation in his book. The data obtained irrefutably prove that glacial periods have cyclicity of about 12,000 years. And that's why no one had been able to figure out why this thing happens cyclically through time. You have the Earth's magnetic field reverses, and immediately after that, you have the Ice Age. And that's it. That's what happens. It is known that over the past 100,000 years, as a result of melting glaciers, the level of the world's ocean has changed dramatically by 20 to 50 meters many times. This was reflected in the sediment of marine flooding. And also geologists recorded that over the past 2 million years, simultaneously with the glacial periods and polar inversions, there was an increase in volcanic activity. Another proof of the 12,000 year cycle was the eruption of the Toba volcano 72 to 74,000 years ago. It was one of the strongest eruptions on Earth in the past 25 million years. Archaeologists believe that across the whole planet, only two to 10,000 people survived in this catastrophe, and that humanity passed through a so-called bottleneck. In other words, it was one step away from extinction. The most destructive volcanic eruption in history, which occurred in other 12 millennial cycles, were the eruption of Phlegrian Fields, Taupo Volcano in New Zealand, Lock Volcano in Europe, Mount Vesuvius, Santorini, Ira, and many others. Lava flows, organic material in, in glacial till and moraine, all pointed to these 12,000 year cycles. Uh, even with the standard deviation in carbon-14 dating, it's obviously that's what's happening. Simultaneously with all these events, there were global extinction of species, including significant reduction in the human population. For example, a large amount of cosmic radiation during the last CHAMP excursion caused the extinction of the entire human species, the Neanderthals. According to other theories, it was caused by the eruption of a supervolcano in the Phlegrian fields and by subsequent acid rains 36,000 years ago. 12,800 years ago, global temperatures soared by as much as 15 degrees Celsius in just a few years, and we realized that this happened without any anthropogenic CO2. Suddenly, most of the ice sheets melted and the Earth left a complete ice age. This younger, driest event led to the mass extinction of megafauna, a sharp decline in the human population, including the extinction of Cro-Magnons. And at the same time, there were extreme floods and natural disasters, intense sea level rise, and melting of the North American ice sheet. After that, however, there was an equally dramatic cooling. Thousands of frozen mammoths and other mammals were found along the northern slopes of Siberia's ravines. For scientists, the reason for these extreme drops are still a mystery. How? Catastrophic volcanic eruptions. Atmospheric temperature changes by 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. World ocean level change by 20 to 50 meters. Large-scale glaciation that froze such giants as mammoths and geomagnetic excursions could have occurred almost simultaneously within a short period of time? It is critically important to examine in detail these facts of the horrific history of past cataclysms occurring with a cycle of 12,000 years. The interdisciplinary approach of the entire scientific community must be used for this purpose, because we're going to be faced with the same catastrophes in the near future. After all, we're now living just at the time of another such cycle, which is exactly the true cause of climate change. Lower mantle, outer mantle, and then guess of the crust, 
starts heating up, you're going to have more earthquakes, more volcanoes. Uh, ocean water is going to warm up because of the sun. And then you'll have more hurricanes, typhoons, tornadoes, and snowstorms too. You know, evaporating ocean water to be let, dropped on the land is ice, snow, hail, whatever. It's going to be more and more. Isn't what we're witnessing now in our planet signs of a great disaster? Let's look at the facts of an increase in the extreme activity of disasters nowadays. Various researchers note an unnatural growth of sesame activity during the last 50 years. In the 1970s, the number of earthquakes with magnitude over 7 doubled. And since 2003, the number of destructive earthquakes with magnitude over 8 has begun to grow. The seismic activity of the Pacific Ring of Fire doubled from 1979 to 2012. The energy of earthquakes and their magnitudes are increasing. And even more surprisingly, the death of earthquake is increasing. Since 2014, there has been recorded an increase in the number of earthquakes at a depth of more than 700 kilometers, whereby over the past seven years, their number has increased by more than 12 times. And in 2015, scientists recorded the deepest earthquake in the history of observation near Japan, 751 kilometers below the surface. Previously, seismologists had assumed that earthquakes were impossible at this depth. Simultaneously with the growth of seismic activity, the number and strength of volcanic eruption is increasing, which is recorded by the volume of lava erupted. During the last 200 years, the number of annual volcanic eruptions on the Earth increased by nearly four times. More dormant volcanoes awaken, and the activity of the already active volcanoes has increased. A number of unprecedented changes are taking place in the core of our planet. In 1998, it shifted abnormally to the north. Now we observe its asymmetric crystallization and unexplained phenomena in the very center of the core. In the outer liquid core, the flow of molten iron has been accelerating since 2015. The beating, that is, microseismic manifestation emanating from the core caused by its dissonance is increasing. Because of the displacement of the core, the rotation of the planet accelerates, its centrifugal force and deformation along the equator grows. Geothermal flow from the interior is increasing, speeding up the melting of glaciers. The average temperature of the ocean water rises, and abnormal areas of extreme warming appear. The groundwater in western Siberia and other regions with a thin crust is boiling. Ozone anomalies are growing gradually above the faults and volcanic regions. The number of fires along the faults is growing due to increased degassing, the release of flammable gases from the Earth's interior. The magnetic field has weakened by 9%, excursion of the northern magnetic pole and growth of the South Atlantic magnetic anomaly has begun. Since 2007, inexplicably for scientists, the thermosphere has undergone a record reduction in density. At the same time, the stratosphere and mesospheres have cooled significantly over the past 20 years, while the troposphere is warming due to the growth of internal heat from the interior. All these processes continue to intensify and synchronize at an alarming rate. Ignoring these facts is suicide. What a waste of divided humanity in the near future if we do nothing. The damage will increase exponentially and irreversibly on a massive scale. The hotbeds of catastrophes will break out and escalate until they envelop the entire planet, turning it into another dead planet like Mars. Galactic radiation affecting the entire solar system will critically alter our star as well. There will be incredibly strong solar flares on the sun, which will turn all our high-tech devices into a useless pile of scrap metal. Inversion of magnetic poles will lead to critical weakening of magnetic field by 8 to 10 times, which will render all living beings unprotected against rays of ruthless cosmic radiation. 
suddenly awoken stratovolcanoes, all of the earth will start to spew magma. Eruptions of ashes and lava will destroy all life on their way. The atmosphere filled with volcanic ash will shield the surface of the earth from sunlight for many years, plunging it into darkness and cold. Volcanic ash will be shed with torrents of deadly acid rains. Groundwater heated by magma chambers will evaporate and fall in endless showers. There will be a rapid rise of the level of the ocean and rivers. Ice caps will start to crumble and disappear due to the activity of the volcanoes awakening under them. The whole coastal megalopolises and states will vanish underwater within a few hours. The currents of the oceans will change their channels, the Gulf Stream will stop, a sharp warming will be replaced by a sudden cooling, and this will bring lifeless glaciation to once comfortable regions of Europe. The concept of the year seasons will cease to exist as such. The Earth will be overwhelmed by the mightiest earthquakes with a magnitude over 10, the ones humankind has never faced before. Giant waves of tsunamis dismissing any obstacles will go around the planet many times, wiping cities from the face of the Earth. Winds and hurricanes will gain power of unprecedented strength and will become chaotic. The burning gases escaping from the bowels of the Earth will lead to a large-scale natural fires in the remaining regions that have not been flooded. Abrasive radioactive particles at enormous speeds will grind cities into dust. Billions of people will die from natural disasters in the first few months. Imagine what it will look like in our consumerist immoral world when disasters of this magnitude only begins to mount. Food, economic, energy, and social crisis would grow until civilization collapses completely. The usual life will no longer be available to any of the inhabitants of the Earth. Lack of portable water and food would turn people into packs of embittered armed gangs killing each other for a piece of bread. Unsanitary conditions, outbreaks of epidemics, pestilence, looting, and devastation would engulf the cities. Survivors would roam around lifeless lands in search of food and shelter. Those living will envy the dead. Such is the cycle of 12,000 year cataclysm in its apogee. And this time it will be stronger than usual because it falls on a difficult period of time when a very sick planet, which we ecologically tormented, is added to a 24,000 year cycle. We have already faced a ruthless enemy that is destroying us. We have no time to continue staying idle as the synchronization and cascade of the ongoing cataclysms is growing inexorably. We need to find a solution on how to put up a defense against our only external enemy. The enemy is strong, therefore all the power of uniting 8 billion people is needed. We need to use all our scientific potential. But this is impossible in the format of consumer society we have now. Today, science serves private capital, not the salvation of humankind. That is why we so urgently need the format of creative society, where it is not the private interest that will dominate, but our common human interest that will. We must hurry to unite and mobilize all scientists. All scientific, technical, and intellectual potential needs to be invested in one task finding solutions to counter the impact of cyclicality since every action has its counteraction. We will be able to find a solution to avoiding climate collapse and to humankind survival only when all of humanity consolidates. The choice is up to us. It's up to each one of us. It's up to you.